After missing out on the 2010 World Cup, the national team of Iran was determined to qualify to Brazil under the guidance of head coach Carlos Queiroz. But after disappointing losses to Lebanon and Uzbekistan in the final round of qualifying, the Iranians knew they would have to do things the hard way by winning in South Korea. We did something that nobody believed we could do, and that was winning the last three games. How did they do it? Watch the newest edition of Great Moments in Team LA History to find out. For today's special edition, I am joined by current assistant coach for Houston Dynamo of Major League Soccer, Omid Namazi, and he was previously also an assistant coach for the national team of Iran during the 2014 World Cup qualification campaign. Omid, welcome to Team Meli Talk. It's really great to have you on the show. The pleasure is mine, Art. Thanks for having me. Now let's get to our agenda. As we know, for all our viewers, we know why we're here. We are reliving a great moment in Team Ameli history. And this game took place on the 18th of June, 2013. So, Omid, let's go back to the days leading up to the showdown between Iran and South Korea. And now this is the game I'm calling a fight to the finish in Ulsan. Now, going into that match against South Korea, a win for Iran would have, of course, would guarantee a spot in the 2014 World Cup. Yet, looking back, and of course, I even talk about myself in this situation, I feel a good amount of Iranian football fans felt that getting a win in South Korea was going to be extremely difficult. But how was the mood in the Team LA camp at that time leading up to the huge match? Um, I feel that at that point, and I'll go back two games before that game, and uh, if I remember correctly, we actually had to win all three games to have a chance. Uh, so we played uh, Qatar in Qatar, and then we played Lebanon at home, and then the last game was um, was against South Korea in Ulsan. Um, we we were fortunate to come out with uh, with the good results in both those games prior to the Korea game. So the feeling going into that last game was a feeling of confidence, a feeling of achievement so far, and that we had another one one more step to go. And uh, if we could stay united and we could stick to the game plan, we could probably come out with a result. And we knew it wasn't going to be easy, but at the same time, we were confident that we could get it done. You know, leading up to that game, you mentioned the two other qualifiers Iran had to play against Qatar and also against Lebanon. So, of course, it was a busy, you know, a, those were some busy days, obviously, leading up to the game against South Korea. But at that time, as I remember, the South Korean head coach, Choi Kang Hee, had some words leading up to, you know, leading up to those qualifiers. It made Carlos Queiroz very upset. So what was your reaction to this when you were trying to prepare for such a, for such a big match and, you know, just trying to prepare for these extremely important qualifiers? It's an interesting point because uh, obviously as coaches, you always try to find some things where you can, you can motivate your group with uh, some sort of excuse to motivate your group with. And, uh, I feel like the South Korean coach probably made a huge mistake. Knowing Carlos Kirosh across the way, he gave him great ammunition, ammunition to uh, to be able to motivate our players. I think what the South Korean coach has said is something to the effect that he'd rather see Uzbekistan uh, qualify rather than rather than Iran, and that just uh, lit the fire uh, underneath Kirosh. And then he, you know, relayed all that anger sort of so to say and all that uh angst to get get uh get going and play as hard as we can against korea and get the result now another thing i want to mention is that the story goes that when you all got to the locker room on the day of the game in ulsan i believe that the rumors say that there were posters and pictures of south korean players maybe even scarves and things like that you know, you even mentioned Choi saying that he wanted to beat Iran to help Uzbekistan qualify. But, you know, how much of this information is true? And, you know, obviously I'm talking about I'm mainly talking about the locker room and how this kind of act was meant to be a psychological game to throw the Tiomeli players off their game. 
Yeah, it's true. They, you know, in their locker room, I remember there was um, pictures uh, posted of their team with their coach, you know, giving a speech to the team. So as soon as we got into the locker room and Carlos saw those, he had every piece of uh, picture that they had up covered um, or taken down, uh, whatever the case may have been. And he also, when he heard about the comments that the Korean coach made, he also made posters for the players to look at. And it was sort of like a, uh, like a dartboard. And then players would throw stuff at it. And, you know, we, we made a joke of it, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, it became a motivational uh, tool for us to, to use um, as far as our game against Korea. What was the atmosphere like inside the stadium? Because playing in South Korea obviously is not easy. No, and it was a full stadium in Ulsan, great facilities. Uh, we were obviously excited about the game, uh, but at the same time, I'm sure, just like everyone else, uh, the players had butterflies, and there probably were, you know, a lot of nervousness within the group. But, you know, once you, you march out onto the field and the first whistle goes – you know, you slowly begin to release those those emotions and and get into the game. And I tell you what, it was uh, it was not easy. Korea uh, on the night was sharp. Uh, they they seemed to be fresher than us. We obviously we had traveled uh, a long way, although we were in Ulsan for a few days. But you know, it's a it's a long way, uh, and jet lag may have may have um, crept crept up in the players' legs, but. You know, as the game wore on, we became more and more confident that we could get the result here. Um, but it was uh, it was very challenging. Uh, I thought Korea played a good game. Um, obviously, you know, the result um, ended up being what it was, and we came out with uh, with what we needed. But it was not easy. As the first half was progressing, South Korea was dominating possession, creating more scoring opportunities. And so what were you thinking about the outcome of the game throughout the first half based on how things were going on the pitch? Yeah, based on the, on the, on things that were going on on the pitch, we were, we were obviously still very much confident. Uh, we knew we had to weather the storm because Korea was going to come at us. They needed to win uh, just like we did. We, they wanted to finish in first place. So, uh, you know, the, the whole time, before the game and throughout the game, Carlos was instructing from the sideline for the players to stay together and make sure that defensively we're solid. And our tactics were so that, you know, we, we defend as a unit inside our half and then we can hit them on the counter. So we knew that we can take away spaces from them and uh, not uh, allow them to have too, too much freedom and not allow them to get too many, uh, too many chances on our goal. And at the end of the day, uh, our goalkeeper, Ramon Amadi, on the day was was really good. So, um, you know, after a couple of saves by him and us being able to hold them back and not allow them to, to get their the, the goal they, they were looking for, I think as the game wore on, we, we, we believed in ourselves even more. Later in the first half, you know, as time was going, I would say late in the first half, you know, Iran had a free kick and it led to a dangerous counterattack opportunity for South Korea. And, you know, it forced Rahman Ahmadi to have to come out to no man's land and make a tackle. But when looking back at that moment, you know, let's just say looking back at the replay, do you think Rahman Ahmadi was maybe a little lucky not to have received a red card? Yeah, I mean, that that's that's always the big question. But, uh, you know, when you're in a situation like that, you don't think that way. You're you're thinking, look, you know, um, you make your own luck. And, you know, it's a good thing that he was out there making the tackle. Otherwise, you know, it could have gone South Korea's way. So um, throughout the campaign, the qualification campaign, there was many, many um, incidents where maybe we were on the wrong end of end of things as far as the referee. And so we we took that in stride and, and you know, said, hey, you know, it's it's our it's our day. And hopefully we can build on that and get the winning goal, which we ended up getting. But. Uh, we never thought about that particular scene uh, as the uh, the game changer, so to say. All right. Now it's scoreless at the half. What did Carlos Queiroz and, and yourself, what did you guys have to say to the TMLE players in the locker room? 
it was all about our belief, you know, and, and the players themselves, they, you know, led by Nick Unam, they, they believed in the fact that we could get the do- job done uh, on that night. And uh, we had, to, we just had to enforce that and, and make sure that the group stays together. And, uh, you know, maybe a couple of adjustments with, uh, with their big guy. Then I think it was the number 18 uh, being so good in the air. We had to make sure that obviously our two center backs were, fighting against them, but also our, our two midfielders in front of them had to come back and double team because he was very good at knocking balls down and, and the, the next wave joining in. So we had to make sure that those two midfielders and also the outside midfielders, they track back and make sure they make it very compressed and, and hard for them to, uh, to gain those second balls and get opportunities on goal. You know, during that game, there was that feel. There was that you know, based from you know, from the point of view of, of an analyst, of an analyst as well, is that you know the possibilities where it was where it was simple, right? You know, control your own destiny, win, you know, beat South Korea, you get a ticket to Brazil. Then there was oh, if you tie, then you have to hope for a certain result between Qatar and Uzbekistan to go a certain way. I mean, when you're in that kind of situation, was it just do not focus on anything like that? I mean, it's just not important at all. Absolutely. In, in those situations, you always, you know, first and foremost, you got to take care of your own business. And then, you know, other things, whether it's the last few minutes of the game and depending on the results that we have on the field at that moment, we can maybe think about or look at the results of the other games. But again, first and foremost, we need to go out, perform and get the result that we wanted. And if we did, nothing else mattered. If we tied, now all of a sudden we had to, you know, rely on other scores. And we also had, you know, let's not forget that if we hadn't gotten the results, we would have had to go through a, uh, a playoff situation where maybe it wasn't favorable for us, but we still thought that, okay, we still have a chance. So we had that in the back background and, or in our back pocket. And knowing that we have that, we went for it. And, uh, you know, obviously – away from Korea, away to Korea and, and uh, the, you know, with, with their fans behind them, it was never going to be easy. But we thought, hey, what, if we can get the game or keep the game in front of us and, and uh, keep it at 0-0, zero, zero, at some point we might be able to get a chance on a counterattack and, and score. And that's it's exactly what happened. 